Hey fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today we're working on the ASVAB, the military placement exam, and we're specifically doing the arithmetic reasoning test. Uh, this is just another sample test to give you an idea of what the test looks like and to prepare you for that test. This is the second video of two. I did the first half of these sample problems uh, in a previous video. I'll put a link to it. And then I'm going to work through these 16 right here. This is also part of a foundations of math course to bring everybody up to speed with solid foundational math skills for a union entrance exam, for the ASVAB math portion of the exam, for a contractor's exam, and also just really useful math that you use every day. Links to all of the previous chapters in the course are in the description below. What I'd highly recommend you do is have a notebook for this course, take some notes as I go over tips and tricks and ideas of math, and then do the problems before I do them. Pause the video, do the problems, then unpause the video and watch how I solve them. There's a problem about ratios. If you don't know what I'm talking about at all, go back to chapter five on ratios in my Foundations of Math course. Watch that video, do a few of those problems, and then maybe come back to this practice as ASVAB test. Okay, so what we got here, a cake recipe calls for five cups of flours, five cups of flour to bake two cakes. So I have five flour to two cakes. How many cups of flour will be needed to bake seven cakes? So I have to have flour on top and cakes on the bottom. How do I get from two to seven? Well, I multiply by three and a half. How do I get from five to this? I multiply by three and a half. And so we're gonna use one ratio set to another, that's a proportion. So I'm just gonna do five times 3.5. 25, carry the 2, 15, 17. I have one decimal place over here, so one decimal place over there. There's my answer, answer C right there. A couple ways to take these standardized math tests. Sometimes they're all online, but they do give you scratch paper. So if you have scratch paper, mark it up as much as you can, but stay organized. Label the problem you're working on, number 10, and show all your work below it. You do that for a couple reasons, primarily so you don't make any careless mistakes and you can go back and look at your work, but also if you have more time at the end and you go back to that problem, all your work's there so you don't have to start it all over again. If you're doing it on paper test itself, then go ahead and mark up that test as much as you can like this, um, crossing out answers that don't make sense, highlighting important numbers, um, and keeping your work somewhat organized. Okay, number 11, the scale of the model of a car is 1 to 24. This is also a ratio problem. Ratio set to another ratio is going to be a proportion. Chapter 5 in the Foundations of Math course. Let's go ahead and break this down. Scale of a model is a ratio of 1 to 24. If the full-size car is 12 feet long, 12 feet long, how long is the model? Well, how do I go from 24 to 12? I multiply by a half. So I go from here to here by multiplying by a half. One times a half is a half. So my answer is a half, but I don't see anything here. And that's because it's a half foot. 12 inches to the foot gives you six inches. A half foot is six inches. So there's your answer right there. Okay, number 12. Again, do these problems before I do them with the video pause, and then watch how I do them. On the throw of a six-sided die, what's the probability you roll less than a three? So that's really an important number. It is not including three. It is only rolling a one or a two. This is a probability problem. Uh, that's chapter nine in the found <clears throat> that's chapter nine in the Foundations of Math course. But probability is very similar to ratio and fractions. It's always going to be the probability, the number in the event over the number in the sample space. So how many things can you get when you roll a die? You get a one, two, three, four, five, or six. So there's six outcomes. Getting it right would be a number less than three, a one or a two. So there are two of them. So your answer is two six. And then I could reduce that fraction right there to one third. And there's my answer there, one third. Okay, I'm on number 13 right now. A bag contains six black marbles, four white marbles. Again, this can be chapter nine probability. I'm gonna kind of write that out. I have a total of six black marbles four white marbles. Sally takes out a black marble and does not put it back. What is the probability the next marble she picks will also be black? 
So we're actually not talking about the first draw. She takes one out, right? She takes out a black marble. So actually I have five black marbles and does not put it back. What's the probability that she sticks her hand back in that bag and pulls a black marble out? Well, the total marbles are nine. What is the probability she pulls a black one out of the total of nine is gonna be five ninths. And there's your answer right there. Okay, problem number 14 is also a ratio problem. Mangoes are sold at eight forty a dozen. So I have $8.40 will buy me 12 mangoes. How much will 15 cost? So I wanna know how, many, how much 15 will cost. So I gotta figure out how much they are a piece. So I'm just gonna do that division. 840 divided by 12 doesn't go into that eight. Decimal point goes up. Um, it goes in here seven times to give me 84 and then bring down the zero. So it cost me 70 cents a piece, but don't forget that I got 15 of them. So I have to take that 15 times the 70 cents. I'm just gonna multiply it by a seven, be a little bit quicker, 35, carry the three, 10, 50, and this is 70 cents. So my decimal place is over there. So it's gonna be 1050 for 15 of them. Thinking about that, that makes sense, right? 12 costs 840, so 15 costs 1050. There's my answer right there. Problem number 15, this is a decimal problem, so this can be chapter three, but there's a couple pieces here. She buys 300 feet, I marked that up, of yarn for a craft project. If it costs 12 cents a yard, so you got two different units here, three feet to the yard, so she has 100 yards of yarn. It costs 12 cents a yard, so I'm gonna do 100 times 12 cents, right? So that's gonna give me one, two, zero, zero. And then I got decimal place over two. How much does Rosita spend? So there's the $12 there. But let's think about this too, make sure that makes sense. You really didn't even have to do this multiplication. You could have just looked at um, these answers and seen the whole point of the problem with these 36 is, is that you did not do the unit conversion. And then you're spending 12 cents a yard and you only have 100 yards, right? So you know it's gonna be in the $10 ballpark range, a little bit more, so you could have gone right to the $12. All right, our last problem um, for the arithmetic reasoning exam here. I'll do the mathematical knowledge in a separate video, kind of as the final exam. Uh, this problem 16 is add these things up to get the average age. That's going to be chapter nine, statistics and probability. Again, if you don't know what these words mean, go back and watch that video with the link in the description. Uh, if you're new to the channel, think about subscribing. The channel is a practical math channel. Uh, and the goal of this whole foundation is a math course is to bring all your basic skills up to a certain level so you could progress on with mathematics. I know this is hard to believe, but math isn't actually hard. The reason why it seems so hard is so cumulative based on the previous section. So if you got a few little missing pieces, it's really hard to go forward. It's really hard to build a straight house, a square house when you got a crooked foundation. So the point of this course is to build that foundation. All right, number 16, five children are six, eight, 14, 15, and 17. What is their average age? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna add all of these up and then divide by the number of values you have. So six and 14 is 20 and eight is 28. 28 and 15 is 43. 43 and 17 is 60. Then I'm gonna do 60 divided by the number of people, five, and I can see it's gonna go in there 12 times answer C's right there. If you have any questions at all, please post them in the comments. I'll answer them as quick as I can. Um, and if you're taking the ASVAB or any standardized math exam, like a union math exam, just keep working at it, practicing it. It'll come. It'll, it'll start making sense the more you work at it, but you gotta put a little bit of time in for that to happen. Thank you for watching.